An injury takes a certain amount of energy and resources to heal. If you're punctured or cut or otherwise injured in a way that prevents you from operating normally, and yes, not bleeding is operating normally, you need some time and some human power. Well, what if it's more than one injury? What if the quantity of injuries is actually, well, let's just go ahead and say more. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Waste Time, we ask the question, does having more injuries change your healing time? So let's say you're a big bad in a film that uses swords as its main form of combat like a ninja movie. And at the end of the movie, you receive a lot of injuries. Most of them happen to break the skin. You look like a zebra, as a matter of fact, a blood zebra, a death zebra. Every single one of those cuts would have to go through the following process. And with that in mind, let's take a look at the singular process. First, the injury happens. Then the body goes, oh, wow, that sucks. We need to do something about this. The immune system begins sending cells in order to keep an infection or any kind of germ or viral or anything like that from immediately attacking the injury. Protein and plasma are then also sent, and if you've ever wondered exactly why it is we have blood the way we have it, where there's just veins everywhere, that's why. There needs to be a way to send this stuff to an injury, where a cut has to do everything it can to close itself off from the outside world and stop allowing germs in. A burn might have to do something different, form a blister. Either way, something has to be done to seal off the injury from the world and allow the immune system to do what it does. As the immune system does that, cells are added and developed, and as you might expect, this does actually take resources from your body. This is why if you develop a blister or a scab, you want to just let it be. Those things exist to keep you safe. They exist to keep infection out. If cuts didn't seal and blisters didn't form, you could end up with septic shock and die. And yes, people with certain deficiencies end up with that problem. So the body does what it can to seal off everything, and then it begins to replicate cells. And cells have to come from somewhere, and that is usually other cells. Well, it is possible to produce entirely new cells, and it is also possible to replicate purely off of stem cells. That's actually not generally how it's done. Typically, any cell that's available will divide. Keeping in mind that replicated cells, cells that have split off, are often quote-unquote aged further along than simply new cells. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. Regardless of how the cells are created, meaning regardless of where they come from, they have to come from somewhere. Matter can't just be created out of nothing, and as your body is working to heal itself, it has to either create more or slow down on other processes. Depending on the kind of injury you have, whether it be a burn, a cut, or some other thing, that's exactly what it will do. There are different healing responses and even variants in between individuals in how a healing response might go. So you have that one cut. It takes a certain amount of time to heal, and that's that. Now say you have two cuts, maybe in different places. They essentially end up taking the same amount of time. Unless they're very deep, obviously, there's not going to be a massive difference in between the healing time. But if you have a lot of deep cuts, here's the thing. The human body will have to continually draw from somewhere. And while it is nice to look at the resources of the world as infinite, and maybe for a lay person, it is actually impossible to comprehend certain numbers of resources. But there is no such thing as an infinite resource. And that applies just as much to your body as it does any other substance on the planet Earth. It's just when it's happening on the inside of your body, it is happening on a much smaller level. If you have two cuts closer to each other, it's going to take longer for those cuts to heal on the basis of the fact that they are drawing from the same area. It's having to send blood, plasma, protein, cells from the immune system, and it's all having to take the same route there. As you might expect, an injury draws specifically from its surrounding area as much as it can, but if you have very severe injuries that aren't near each other, it is the same thing. The body still has to take in resources and nutrients in order to live, and those very things are used to heal an injury. So, in order to sum this up in a way that makes more sense than a lot of different branching paths, let's talk about the original branching path known to man, the river. A river does a lot of different things, and there's a certain number of branches 
villages or tributaries or little lakes that it goes off into that doesn't actually affect the flow of the river. However, if you diverted the river too much, it would. The river's flow might go down or the river's level might go down. Making the assumption that you didn't divert it so much that it just totally destroys the river, it would still do what a river does, just not as fast. And that's basically exactly what happens to an injury. Making the assumption that it doesn't get infected, it's just a matter of producing enough resources to effectively heal it. Now if it does get infected, that's a totally different story. Depending on what kind of infection it is, it could end up making you very, very sick. And that totally changes the entire situation because it is primarily an immune system function at that point. The more injuries you have, obviously the more surface area is affected, and the more surface area is affected, the more probability you have to come into contact with germs on an area of your body that doesn't seal germs out. Ultimately, we really evolved to handle a lot. But ultimately, we live in a world of scarcity. And although we may not experience scarcity in the manner that it is said we experience it, certainly resources are more plentiful than people who profit off of the resources say they are. There are physical restraints on the world we occupy. So, word of advice, don't be the main bad guy in a sword-oriented ninja flick. They always end up chopped to bits at the end of the movie, and that's not something you can come back from. Now, discussion on this topic is probably going to be interesting because a lot of people have personal experience with injury, and it's worth sharing because the more informed one is, the better life will be for that person. Maybe not on an emotional level, but on a physical level, definitely. Leave a comment, and if you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos all the time. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on Waste Time.